There are places with the, those dopes um, where sampling drilling is, has shown that the ore runs well over 100 ounces per ton. Well, the, the Virginia's vein has our resource is on a 5,000 foot long strike length where there's actually 16,000 feet of vein that is uh, unexplored. And uh, so the mine life at, at currently in the reserve is artificial and doesn't reflect the overall life of mine that will uh, be developed. And then there's uh, half a dozen other veins that have n nothing on them at all yet and will become uh, part of the reserve over time. They all have access to the, the revenue tunnel. I am in western Colorado having just flown over the Rocky Mountains. Now I'm in the San Juan Mountains, landed in Montrose, Colorado taking a 45 minute drive to Ure, Colorado in order to meet up with the management of Arcana Corporation to go toward the world's highest grade silver mine in terms of proven and probable ounces, 37 ounces per ton. This mine will be in production first quarter of 2021. The company has announced, this is the company I'm invested in. They also are a sponsor of my show and website and on this tour you're going to be able to see why I'm invested in this company and am excited about a new silver producer in a silver bull market. In addition to Brian Briggs who has been working on this mine for several years optimizing it getting it ready to come back into production I'm going to meet up with Mike Lee who is a mine manager who has worked on other narrow vein mines throughout his career. We're also going to meet up with Gary Lindsay who is in charge of corporate communications for Arcana Corporation and we're going to meet some of the local dignitaries and political leaders and get their take on what this mine means to the community. CEO and President Kevin Drover could not be here but I am going to video conference him into this video after I get back from this site tour so that you can get some of his commentary and his insights on this project and why they're so excited about it. So come with me as we tour the world's highest grade silver mine. The Revenue of Virginia's mine uh, is a mine, of course, we picked up a couple of years ago, and it's a fantastic acquisition that we, we made. Uh, we're looking at getting it into production the first quarter of 2021. We're working hard toward that right now. Uh, if you look at the current price of silver relative to our uh, feasibility study that we did, uh, you know, for every dollar increase in the, in the, uh, in the price of uh, silver, we're going to see over $3 million come right to the bottom line. So this is a very, very, it will be a very, very profitable mine when we get it into production. Relative uh, to our peers out there, and, and there's a number of other silver companies, I think we are very undervalued compared to them. Everybody is waiting for us to demonstrate uh, that, uh, you know, we know how to do this and get it into production and, and uh, uh, get the positive cash flow, but uh, it, it's, it's looking very positive. Orcana owns 100% of URA silver mines, and, and URA is the uh, local company uh, in, in the URA county down there, and it's very, very well known. Orcana is, is largely less known, but we're the parent company. We anticipate uh, starting production in Q1 2021. As, as everybody knows, the COVID-19 has, as, uh, you know, like everybody else, has slowed everything down, and so it slowed us down as well. Uh, but uh, you know we're 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 making good progress toward that. We just raised some money. We're uh, getting in the process of ordering our long lead time items and uh, doing the work that we need to do uh, during the uh, uh, the summer season. We've been working on a uh, a debt facility for the company uh, that continues to progress very well. We've uh, narrowed down uh, a number of uh, the. Uh, the companies that we'd like to participate with. Uh, not quite there yet, but uh, hopefully we'll be making an announcement soon.
Brian Briggs, a sixth generation miner from uh, the local UA area. I've uh, been with the project quite a while. Um, uh, excellent CEO of the company. Uh, we look forward to his contribution. Management team in general, we're very lucky to have the group that we have down there. We've got uh, tremendous experience uh, in, in uh, operations and building mines. This area, you see these old buildings, these old buildings are in some of the pictures from the uh, 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, this building right here was the mine office at one time, the one that you still see. The other one, other one was just a miner's shack. Uh, there were over 2,000 people living here in the 1800s and early 1900s. And most of, the, most of them were down in there among the willows where the beaver ponds are, as well as up this hillside, because these were the only places you could build due to the snow slides. And if you look here, you can see these snow slides coming down where they would come down. So you can see in the background to the left is the mill building. The mill is actually built underground. What you're seeing are the tailings bays and the offices for the mill. In right here to the right is the main office building and dry. We have a waste crusher there. And then that, uh, that dump wall that you see is where all the waste is dumped. And then we crush it and use it for road base. All of our road base is either sold or, or we give it to the county to help rebuild. County Road 361 that comes to the mine site. So a lot of action going on here right now um, as we move into a startup. not been mined above us this, and we don't have any drilling on the football vein above us now as I told you back behind us that F9 stove below our feet ran 90 ounces we don't know what this runs in here but it's there and it's been unexplored we got 20 high grade samples uh, captured by drilling um, uh, half of them were drilled in 2016 total of 42 holes were drilled in 2016 and uh, 500 drill holes total in the drilling, uh, historic drilling. So if you look at that, 10% of the drilling was done in 2016, yet we got of the top 20 high grade samples, half of them. That is simply because of drill core size and sample size because of it. A larger sample on a nuggety deposit will give you a better, a, a better estimate of the grade. So the current reserves are at 37 ounces per ton. It's feasible that that reserve grade could even go up. Well, really. when you look at the, when you, you have to look at the fact that some of those reserves are in the yellow, rose, and terrible, which are much lower grade than the Virginias. So what you really need to look at is what is the grade of the Virginias, both above us and below us, and separate the two because we know the precious metal zone is above us. So. That is, that is double the grade of what's beneath our feet. So the average grade in the precious metal zone is averaging around 50 to 55 ounces. Below our feet, it's, it's in, the, in 30 to 40 ounces. And then in the yellow rose and the terrible, you're talking more in the 20s. So when you look at average, you're taking into account two other vein systems that are lower grade. And you're also talking about precious metal zone above us versus non-precious metal zone below us. Now, 30 ounces per ton at $27 silver still makes a lot of money here, but you'd rather be in 50 ounce per ton rock to start this mine up. This is where we uh, store batteries as well as charge the locomotives, maintenance area for the most part. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be going down a decline here that Fortune Minerals drip, drove. Uh, we're we will never use this. Uh, it was driven with rubber tire. We're a rail mine. We want to stay rail. The infrastructure, we have tens of millions of dollars of infrastructure here that is set up for rail. There's uh, no reason at this time to change that since we're going up. 
um, for the most part. So, but, but one of the things that is nice about this decline is it does access it does access the vein in a number of places. And where it does access the vein, it's very good. It's a very good vein in this area. This is slated for mining in about year three or three uh, in the mine plan. We would like to mine it sooner because it is very good. The football vein in this area is running about 80 ounces of silver right now. Okay, so, so we'd like to mine it. However, to mine it, we have to rehab the number one shaft, which is back behind us. That shaft was, was driven in the 1800s. It, is, uh, it was rehabbed by Ranchers Exploration in the 80s. It's about a $7 million rehab again for us to rehab that to use it. The shaft goes down 700 feet, accesses four levels, and uh, we'd like to get to it at some point. But again, that's slated for years to three and, and later, because in general, at this mine, since the vein is zoned vertically, we want to be up as high as we can get in the system. Um, we're, we went in at 10,600 feet. The precious metal zone generally is around 11 to 11.2. So we want to be 11,000 feet in elevation or higher to get into the precious metal zone. In general, the grade of the ore is double what it is down below. So if you're in the precious metal zone, you're going to be double the grade of precious metals than you will be below our feet. So we want to stay high in the system. That's why drilling the bluegrass, the new, new claim we just got, all that drilling is above 11,000 feet. And that'll be in the precious metal zone. Okay, so we're standing here at what used to be the northern extent of our our uh, claim package. Now, so this is the end of the Monongahela claim, just a few hundred feet away from us to the north here. We it since uh, since the since we have since the feasibility study in 2018, we've done quite a bit to start adding to the additional claim package and extend our ownership further to the north. Since 2018, we've added the bluegrass blue claim, which is directly north of us on strike on the Virginia Spain. We are drilling that right now, and we've had some interesting hits, though we don't have the assays back. Past that, we have the Raleigh claim, which is owned by the Forest Service, which is another 1,500 feet of strike length. Past that, we have the Shamrock claim, which we own, and we've owned that, uh, but it hasn't been drilled. Past that, there's a Forest Service claim called the Raleigh, and then past that, there's another Forest Service claim. Now, since 2018, we have submitted a acquired lands lease on those Forest Service claims. Uh, we just received word that the lease can move forward. We're in the NEPA process right now. That should take a few months to get through. Um, and in a, in a, shortly thereafter, we should have that lease locked up. And that'll give us 16,000 feet of strike length on the Virginia's vein from south to north, of which our current reserves reside in about 5,000 or less speed of that. So we have exploration potential both north and south of three times what we currently have our reserve package in. We really wanted to get a good feel for this, for this vein. So I've had the miners take a couple rounds on both sides of this where, it, where it's cut by this uh, cross cut. Well, just up here, you're gonna see some really a really good example of what the vein looks like when it uh, when it's heavily mineralized. It's pretty normal for this vein to run like this. Pretty much all the minerals of interest to us are in that face. We have some good sphalerite, zinc, which is brown, brown in material. We got obviously have the very bright and shiny galena with lead minerals. You'll see some tetrahedrite, which is a dark gray. Running, in, running through here. That is the primary silver mineral that we have. And then every now and then you'll see some calcopyrite and the gold, a bit of gold that we have in this vein will run with the calco for the most part. So this is a very good structure. This, this is very typical for what we see when we, uh, when we want to mine it. And uh, should, if, we went, if we were to come down here and drive out on this, uh, we'd probably average between 30 and 40 ounces of silver per ton with, with good base metals. Um, Base metals, probably uh, lead will run around 5 to 7% in this area. 
zinc will run a couple percent. And gold, a little sniff of gold there, about a tenth. And what's the width and mineralization here, would you say? Well, the width of the structure, so the, the Virginia's vein is a, is, a, is a structure that runs inside or alongside a dike. So you can see this here, this is the dike, which is very different from that over there. This is the San Juan Tuff. So the vein will run on, from the hanging wall to the foot wall of this dike or in the middle of the dike. So this is a very easy structure to, to find because of the dike. That dike can be anywhere from 10 feet wide down to just a couple of feet. Uh, this vein here, this mineralization, is two and a half feet. Uh, up here, it's more like a, you know, a foot and a half down here. As you go over to the other side over there, it's gonna run even wider. And there's actually two mineralized zones on this side. There's this one over here, which doesn't, doesn't look very good. It's mostly bolt quartz. Uh, but on this side, then you can see the vein structure here, and it averages about a foot and a half wide on the average on this structure. Um, not as heavily mineralized on this side, but that's, that's what we expect in this vein. This vein should pinch and swell. Where it does swell out, generally you'll get very good uh, results on the assays. And as it pinches down, you still may have very good results, but you're just going to have less, less tons. This is a very good vein. We like to see this. So we're going to go up around 25 feet and we're going to get into the actual test stope. You'll see as you get into the test stope that it's mounted toward the middle because we've taken three shots of Rasu in the middle and we've only taken one or two on the ends. So you'll go up about 16 feet in the middle as we climb in and then you'll see where the mill holes come up where we slush the ore out on conveyor belt after we blasted in the Rasu shot and then you'll also see the Rasu cut that we take. Now we're only trying to take the ore in that Rasu cut and you'll be able to see how we've been able to do that. Right now all the samples and surveying that we've done up here in the test stope show that you know we're averaging around 18 percent dilution using Rasu on this. Okay so up we go. This copper? No, that is spray paint. <laughs> Okay, so we're in the test up here. Up above us, you can see the vein running. And uh, right back behind you right there, if you want to come up here and turn around, you'll see how the Rasu shot is. So where we're standing right now, both the waste and the ore have been blasted out to give you a mining width of three and a half to four feet. But up ahead of you is the Rasu shot with the waste still in place. Now we pre-drill the waste, so we don't have to come in here and drill it afterwards so this is ready now to shoot the waste we haven't done it because we want people to come in and see what the Rasu shot looks like and there's another place in the, on the other end where we'll I'll also see the Rasu shot and as we walk through the stove most of the, all the waste has been shot we're standing on waste here this will continue to move up as we use the test stove as a training stove and we've got three, four hundred feet above us to, to make this into a good training stove over the life of the mine. What they do is they work the whole stope across. Uh -huh. So you'll, you will drill the stope out, you'll probably drill about 90 feet per shift out, and then you will shoot the, the ore, and then the guys will keep drilling ahead of them, and they'll drill another 90 feet, and then they'll shoot the ore, and then behind them, as, as they get, the drillers get far enough ahead, the, the other part of the team will be coming in and they'll be picking up the conveyor belt. Well, they'll be slushing out the ore first, then they'll be able to pick up the conveyor belt. And once the conveyor belt's picked up, then they will shoot the, they will crib up any raises and they will shoot the waste. So that'll proceed all the way across 500 to 1,000 feet on each stove. So right now, so we've taken three cuts up right here. So we're three, three cuts up. Um, 18 feet up from the original scram that we drove and the vein's still right here along the hanging wall. Now it's, it's again, we put the test stope in a weakly mineralized area because we didn't want to create a problem later for mining and training being what training is, you know, you're going to have to train the people to do it right. So 
being in a weakly mineralized area is great, but the vein is nice and easy to see, as you can see. It's right there, it's running about 18 inches here, a little wider back there. It'll neck down ahead of us. And as we get towards the end, it'll, be, it'll become more strongly mineralized. You'll start seeing the galena, the sphalerite, and the tet tetrahedrite. Um, and as we go that way, we'll get close to a, uh, a stoke that was mined by Federal Resources in the 60s that, as I said, when we were on the train, we've uh, sampled that, that area and it runs 30 to 40 ounces of silver. Yeah, you can see that, uh, you know, this, we haven't had anybody in this area for, uh, um, in this, we haven't mined this for a couple years. You can see how stable it is. There's nothing really hanging. Every now and then I'll bring a team of miners in here and uh, they'll, they'll bar it down, catch any loose. But this has been here for two years and there's not much here. This is pretty darn good. Here and there you'll see some loose stuff, but uh, the guys have barred it down. So we'll just go ahead and progress here. Now we're going over a three cap raise here. There's three compartments to this raise. There's a uh, muck pass here. I'm standing on the manway, which will take us down to the main level. And then over here is a uh, timber slider. Uh, colloquially, it's called a coffin skip. And when we get down below, you'll see why. Okay, now we got slusher. So it's just a uh, dual drum. Uh, runs off of uh, air, so it's pneumatic. And back, back over there will be the bucket for this thing, which you'll see. So they'll just they'll pin this on one end, and with the dual drum, they'll just drag the bucket back and forth and move the ore on the conveyor belt to the muck pass. So you'll be able to see that here shortly. Brian, so this is the test stove. So the actual stopes that we will begin mining next year, are they about this width? They'll be about this width. We're going to try to be about four feet wide. This is a little narrower than that, but um, you know, we, we've been working on really what the proper width is. We can mine in this, however, when it's this narrow and we're in an 18 inch wide vein, we, we're not going to get enough waste in the waste shot to fill the open hole. So we'd like to see us averaging around four feet wide. Shoot the ore onto the conveyor belt, so we'll roll this out and uh, then set up the slusher and slush on the conveyor belt. This is a, a good way to, to not lose ore or not pick up extra waste as you're moving, material, moving your ore to a muck pass to load the trades. So now we're at the uh, far end of the stove. We're about 220 feet down the stove. And you can see the slusher bucket right there. So that's the bucket that, that is used to move the ore back and forth. Pretty, a very conventional technology's been around for many, many, many years, longer than I've been alive. Uh, but we're starting to get into where the vein starts getting uh, strongly mineralized with galena and tetrahedrite. It's very narrow here, but as you can see, even though we're very narrow ahead of us, we've been able to mine this vein down to less than, uh, less than a foot with the Rasu shot. And you can see very little dilution. Here's the waste portion of the shot that still needs to be shot. We've cribbed up this manway right here in front of us. And at the far back end, the vein has widened out to, uh, it's, you know, a foot and a half to two feet on the far back end. And you can see, if you look closely, you can see the galena as well as the tetrahedrite above your heads. Right now, we have uh, we have three ships that are running. The ships are running 14 and seven, and uh, 14 days on, seven days off. On each crew, there are two teams of uh, miners. That's that's a three-man team, a miner one, a miner two, and a nipper. Uh, so adding those guys all up, you got uh, six guys per crew. You got 18 guys, plus you have a bull gang. Gives you 21 miners, plus their shifters. Now, in addition to that, we have the mechanics, the electricians, and some surface help. So total right now, we have about 51, 52 people uh, working for Uray Silver Mines. When it goes into production, we assume that we're, right now, we're projecting around 80 people underground. That, uh, that'll be three to th four teams of three mi uh, miners on each crew. Um, it'll also include people for haulage as well as hoisting, because we are putting in a couple hoists. Okay, so uh, listen, we're in, the, we're in the workings here. We're, we're currently running the raises all the way up to uh, the uh, 1500 and 1200 levels. 
So the miners are just coming on shift. But really to talk about this correctly, I think I'll hand it over to Mike Lee. Mike just joined us a few months ago as the general manager here. Uh, he's got a wealth of experience in narrow vein mining. And uh, with that, I'll just let Mike take over. Hey, well, thank you, Brian. And first off, uh, I'd like to thank Brian and Kevin Grover and Arcana for the opportunity to come here. A little bit of my history, I started working underground in the late 70s and I've uh, been in the mining industry for well over 35 years. Most of my experience underground, a little bit open pit in Montana. I mean, about three years ago, I came here on a tour and got a chance to look at the Rizzo stoping. And I was most impressed with it and I thought, you know, we can do this and do it right and it'll be successful. I might add that we've got an exceptional group of people here. You know, Brian and that group has done a, a heck of a job of holding this place together over the four years and brought it to the point where Arcana stepped in. Um, have faith, Arcana has faith in the property and we've been hiring people, starting off a development program and it won't be that far down the road before we have it developed and we'll be feeding the mill. Yeah, our ability to grow the production at the Revenue Virginia's mine is, uh, is, is quite good. The feasibility design is at 270 tons a day uh, through the mill and, and from the mine. But the mill has a capability of uh, around, around 500 tons per day. So we have the opportunity to fill the mill uh, at some point in the future. Well, one of the things, of course, we want to do is we want to make sure that at 270 tons a day, we get up and running at that rate, we get our productivity, we get our cost, cost profile in place, we get uh, uh, you know our production profile in place. Once that's done, then we can look towards taking the production you know, to 300 to 400 to 500 tons a day. So we'll be looking to do that within the first couple of years of, uh, of getting this up and running. So good upside for production, good upside obviously on, on the uh, on the silver price as well. So we're, we're looking forward to here to uh, a very robust uh, near-term future. Pretty impressive when you think this is all underground. You can see the control room back clear up there. So by the way, uh, this, this mill is designed to be run by four guys. extents of nine high-grade veins with historic production, high-grade production. We control them now. We have drilled three. Of that, the, the revenue, the, the Virginia's vein is the most important to us at this point, but we haven't touched the Wheel of Fortune. We haven't touched the Atlas Cumberland, Klondike, Hidden Treasure, which is right behind that, that mountain there. That was a high-grade vein that Thomas Walsh would buy. That the tunnel goes across? That goes across San Pedro all. tunnel goes right in, but we don't have to because we crossed the, that Atlas Cumberland Klondike Hidden Treasure banner vein uh, with the Revenue Tunnel. All we have to do is drive out on it. There's no other companies right now that are even considering coming into the San Juans. Okay, uh, in the San Juans, there were you know, four major mines that had a hundred years of production. The Idorado, the Campford, which is right next to us, the Shenandoah Dives Mayflower Complex, and the Sunnyside Gold. All those mines had a hundred years plus production. Um, Idorado was running 15, 1600 tons a day. They didn't shut down due to lack of reserves, they shut down due to a change in focus by Newmont. Newmont became Newmont Gold. This was a base metal mine with silver and gold credit. There's no other mine in the world that has this exploration potential. I mean, you know, you go up to Silver Valley, there's exploration potential, but not this many veins all over the place that all have historic production. You know, we, this is our sandbox right now. Nobody else is here. So well, this is the Wheel of Fortune vein and it actually come, come comes through there, it goes under that talus so you can't see it, and then it crop, uh, crops up there on that mountain. And then it keeps going another two, 3,000 feet on the other side. We own that whole strike length on that vein. We have not, not sampled it, 
except for surface sampling and some mapping, but you can see it pretty hard to get, just even get up there and try to sample it. But you can actually see a dump across the way. That's the Wheel of Fortune vein over there as well. We call it the tornado over there, but it's still the Wheel of Fortune vein. And then you can see it drop clear out on top of that mountain up there, up on top of Potosi. You'll see another vein over there coming across that. That's the bimetallist. That's a fairly high grade vein. Now we don't own any, um, any of that property, but it's a target. And so at some point we may want to go after it. And we're standing on the San Pedro here, the San Pedro tunnel. San Pedro tunnel is about 3,800 feet of tunnel that went through that mountain there. And on the other side is the uh, extension of the Atlas Cumberland. Now we own the Atlas Cumberland further to the north um, and we are in the process of picking up a lease with uh, the Forest Service to pick up the rest of the strike length of the Atlas Cumberland. And then on the far um, east side of the Atlas Cumberland vein, we actually own the hidden treasure mine, which is the extension. So we own the hidden treasure, we're leasing the center portion, which is called the Klondike, which the San Pedro Tunnel goes into. And then we own the Atlas Cumberland on the other side of this mountain. And then extending further, it becomes the banner. We have over 12,000 feet of strike length on the Atlas Cumberland. It has good historic production, and we have no reserves and no resource on it simply because it's a long range target. But that's why I said there's no other silver mine in the world that probably has our exploration potential that we have all these veins here. We have focused on one, which is the Virginius, and we have reserves on the Yellow Rose as well as the Terrible, but we haven't um, produced an exploration plan at this point that's the, uh, that will fully explore even a portion of those veins. Um, and we have 16,000 feet of strike length on the Virginius, of which more than half of it is completely unexplored except for surface sampling. And we do have surface sampling and mapping on the Virginias. And we've gotten samples at surface of up to 38 ounces per ton, but not a drill hole one underneath it. So we have a tremendous amount of work here to really realize the potential of this mine. So where are we gonna to go today? We're gonna to go here. And then uh, we own here, over here in the Atlas. And then we also own over here in the Banner. Okay, so we have Silver Basin, Sydney Basin, Governor Basin. Governor Basin has the original mine, the Virginia's mine right here. And we'll see that today. This is the terrible, original terrible mine. The drill is right here. The vein is coming through like this, the Virginia State. If you look really closely right here, there's a shaft called the bluegrass shaft. We're drilling right underneath that shaft right now. Okay, now if you look here, this is called the Smuggler Union Mine, big mine. And you can see the dumps are huge, big structure, high grade gold. This was mined in the 1800s. And then that, that mine, that vein comes like this. This is called the Humboldt Mine. This is called St. Sophia's Ridge, or the Terribles. And it is the Smuggler Union vein. The ridge is. When you get there, you'll see it. This is a structure that we don't, it's an unnamed structure that we got 48 ounces a ton on. It was mine. We own it. Nobody's ever looked at it. We've got multiple structures coming through here all over the place. And we own almost all of that now. When you get up there and you start looking at it, you go. So I'm uh, Ben Tisdall, I'm a commissioner for Uray County, um, and this is my district, part of my district for Uray County. For over a hundred years, um, mining was the foundation of Uray County's economy. 
For the last 30 years, it's been more of a tourism-based economy. Now we're trying to diversify and we welcome um, the return of mining to uh, the core of Uray County's economy. Um, we will have between 75 and 150 employees based at the Uray Silver Mines. Uh, the revenue to the county based on the mineral uh, severance tax production will allow the county to do a lot of things that are important that it hasn't been able to do in the past. And um, it's just, it's great to see uh, the county return to a responsible, uh, ethical, transparent uh, based mining economy. And uh, the county, Uray County very much welcomes Uray Silver Mines back to uh, production. We're standing on top of the terrible number two dump right now. It's also where our uh, emergency escapeway comes out right over here that was well, was pulled in uh, 2014 by Fortune Minerals when they were the operator here. Above us to the uh, above us is the actual original Virginius and if you come around over here you can actually see that brownish dump up above this terrible number one dump is the original Virginius and if you look to the left up there you can see the original powder magazine from the 1800s uh, that was installed there and we've got some pictures of them actually putting that uh, powder magazine that building up there so we turn around here and you can see the old original mill that was here in the 1800s before they drove the revenue tunnel so they ran this mill the tailings were just put out there we actually have a cleanup program that we're partnering with trout and limited and the uncapagri watershed partnership slated for next year to come in and, and do some reclamation in here to clean this up from the uh, historic tailings and some of the dumps here. So as we go and look around here, what we want to do is we want to try to figure out where this Virginia's vein actually runs. Now the Virginia's vein comes down a cleft right up there. And you can see the, uh, the dumps, the small dumps that were originally driven in the 1800s coming down that cleft. It comes down underneath our feet and runs right out across here. And if you look out in the middle of the basin there, you can see a hole and that was the bluegrass shaft. Over to the left, you can actually see the drilling that we're doing. Right now we're drilling the Virginia's vein right directly beneath that old bluegrass shaft. And as you look further on the other side to the right of that big dump from the mountaintop mine, you can see another small dump. That's the Virginia's vein again, and that vein continues going up over that, pa that pass and towards the Mount Sneffels, which is a 14er. So over here, we have the, the terrible vein is coming out of that cleft, coming right down underneath our feet and heading right towards the drill. The drill is sitting almost directly on top of the terrible vein, and then you can see some dumps going up the mountain. That's the terrible vein. We own all of that strike length right there. It hasn't been drilled. We're gonna try to, and we've done some sampling on it, on some surface sampling that's come back pretty good. So we wanna find a way to try to drill that over to the left. Further over to the left here, we've got a guy, kind of an unnamed structure that, uh, that we took some surface samplings and we got in, in one of those drifts and we got some, some very high assays we own that structure as well that you can see those dumps there off to the uh, further to the left just around the corner there is the humboldt mine the humboldt mine actually was mining the smuggler union vein the smuggler union vein is this ridge here that's saint sophia's ridge that's behind us so that's the smuggler union vein and it goes another couple thousand feet off to the northwest and uh, we've got uh, lease applications in with the Forest Service from the Humboldt all the way to that ridge on the Smuggler Union. So we need to do some exploration there. So just pretty much everywhere you look up here in this basin, there are targets. Right now we're focused on the Virginia's vein. That's where we have our reserves. The drilling that's going on has, has proven that this vein is it's quite wide. Uh, we had a couple uh, intercepts that are four feet, to two and a half feet true width. Uh, which is wider than uh, what we have down below in the mine. Usually that's running about 18 inches. So we're, we're pretty excited about the drilling that's been done just this year right here in this unexplored bluegrass claim. 
The next claim over is the Raleigh. The Raleigh we have a lease application in with the uh, Forest Service, so that's another 1,500 feet of strike length. Then we have the Shamrock claim, which kind of runs over that ridge. We have, uh, that's our claim, unexplored. The next claim is the Randolph, which is a lease application with the Forest Service that uh, we should be closing here pretty soon. And then the next claim, so there's, right there you got four, after the bluegrass you have the Raleigh, the Shamrock, the Randolph, and the, Fulton. the Fulton, yeah, thank you. And the Fulton claim, that's 6,000 feet of strike length, completely unexplored, where we, where we know where the vein is running. We have the, we've mapped it and sampled it on surface. We just need to go do some exploration. In a rising silver price environment, uh, the revenue of Virginia's mine becomes a, a, a cash printing machine. And then on top of all of that, we have this fantastic exploration potential. It's got the potential to double, triple, quadruple the life of this mine and probably add some significantly higher silver uh, grades as well in the future.